What's going on guys? So today I actually have a Mermail deck profile. And Mermail is honestly such a crazy combo deck because it can put up like just as many negates and interactions on board as the craziest combo decks we know like Ad Emancipator, Dragon Link. It can put up just as many disruptions. However, it can also make your opponent start with like four cards in hand, which is just absolutely bonkers. Um, the deck is honestly so fun and has so many plays and combos and I do plan to make a combo video for this deck. Uh, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. And uh, it, it's really important to know the combos for Mermail, so I definitely want to put that video out there so I can show like some pretty important combos the deck has. And honestly, yeah, it's just a super fun explosive combo deck that can completely just win turn one. And it has outs to Dark Villa No More and Forbidden Droplets. It's actually crazy. Um, so yeah, just going to go into the deck profile here. Um, if you do like Mermail, please be sure to like and subscribe for future Mermail content. Um, I love Mermail. Heart, heart Mermail. I'm going to get a shirt that says that. But uh, anyways, on with the profile. Um, three, uh, Abysteus. Uh, very standard. He's just like the um, best combo starter because he had like him and Dragoon together are absolutely insane. So three Abysteus, very, very um, standard. Uh, one Megalo. Uh, you can play two of this. I choose to play one because you don't really want to open him. You kind of want to search him. However, when you do draw him and your hand is fine besides drawing him, um, you, you don't have to search him. So sometimes playing two just to draw him is not bad. But yeah, you just use this to summon and search your uh, spell. Also get more Dragoon's effects off of him. He's a level seven. And uh, yeah, overall you have to play at least one mega low, but I think you can uh, also get away with two. For the rest of the Mermel engine, it is... One pike, one gun does the more standard stuff, and I choose to play a dine. Um, so the pike and the gun, pretty self-explanatory. Um, pike is used for quite a few combos that make Bahamut Shark and easy pitch for uh, Dragoons, and yeah, he's just very, very important. And you don't want to draw him, but he, he is a very important combo piece. Gun can help you extend, and just any time you discard a card, she's just a free summon, which is crazy, but honestly, sometimes your board is too full to use her to her potential, so she's good in some hands and, like, not so great in others, but, like, some combos like her and one for one can be absolutely ridiculous, so these two, much more standard. However, this Dine is very, very strange because a lot of lists choose not to play her. Uh, I've just found out, like, you can play her, and she allows you to make uh, Borload Savage on your opponent's turn much, much easier. And I'll show a combo for that um, in my combo video. So, yeah, and then I'll explain it in the deck profile, of course. But she essentially comes out as an extender, and you can use her as a synchro play. So, yes, I will explain that more when I get to the extra deck. But, yeah, I choose to play one additional Dine. And this is all the Mermail Monsters. Um, not a huge package. Essentially, like, water as the more uh, standard term to call this deck. Uh, you can play it without Mermails or even a smaller Mermail package, but I want to play the Mermail package because, you know, it's more nostalgic and I love the Mermail monsters and they are very explosive in their own right and, yeah, super, super good. So on to more water combo stuff. We have three Deep Sea Diva, uh, just like your best starter because it can search the actual best starter, which is your uh, three Neptibus. This is beyond the most powerful card in the deck because it's essentially, you know, you just dump Dragoons for cost, which is already great. And then you can um, add Dragoons, like dump Dragoons to add Dragoons is just so standard. And it's how you're gonna get to a lot of your pieces. And also it's discard effect, or like, yeah, when you pitch it to actually the water monster effect, um, special in Atlantean in your graveyard, that's actually super relevant for a lot of uh, like, of your plays that lead into Bahamut Shark and to Toad, and then you go Coral Anemone and bring him back and then use his effect. It, it can get honestly super crazy. Um, but the fact that he's a cost to send, sort of like Cherubini, is very, very powerful. Um, definitely the card you want to see at least once in your combo because it's going to extend you so far. And it makes it so hard for your opponent to decide what to hand trap when you're just like swimming in Dragoons, um, pun intended. Uh, next up, three Dragoons. Um, while Nechibis is the best card in the deck, this deck does not function without this card. This is the deck's everything. Just spam Dragoons infinite times a turn. That's all you want to do. Use Dragoons as many times as possible. Um, sometimes you actually like use your Toad as Link material just so you can get Dragoons back uh, in some combos. Depends on the list and depends what combo you're going for. Uh, what makes comboing in Mermails kind of hard is it's not like uh, Dragon Link or Infernoble where the objective was C2 Warrior Monsters or C2 Dragon Monsters go Halp combo. There's like 
no set in stone start and end point for like any given opening hand unless you see uh, like Teus Dragoon. So it, it can be very difficult to find which route you're going to take. Um, but the rewards for this deck are so, so high. Like it's a very high roll and you can uh, make some crazy boards. And Dragoon is just the centerpiece of it all. Then I choose to play one heavy infantry in the main deck and no other Atlantean monsters. This is definitely a smaller Atlantean count. Um, and yeah, I, I see that. I just don't want to play Marksman even though it's a uh, pretty heavy trap format. I just rather side Marksman. Um, because like, you don't want to end up bricking, like, of course there are water monsters, and you can pitch them for your water effects, but you really don't want to brick on the Atlanteans that don't do much. Heavy Infantry is the best one, because you just search it by the end of your combo to give you an interaction with, uh, Abyssalatia, and he's like a pseudo-extender, um, like, you can summon him and then summon Diva, and he, he's like the best other Atlantean, but you just need him for a pop, essentially. Um, but because we're playing a smaller Atlantean count, like, just the one Heavy Infantry, this deck is... Obviously, very hard go first. It's not like old mermaids where it was just break your board, go second. OTK, it's very go first. And then three of the reason uh, to play this deck or any water combo based deck is the ability to run Minstrel. Essentially, a pointer on your turn for free. Um, this is how you just very easily, like some decks, they need to make Opelousa before five or um, Bahamut Shark into Toad before five, which this deck can do. But Minstrel kind of lets you cheat that. Like, this is, you're out to Nibiru instantly, out to uh, Ash. Just steal the hand trap in their hand and combo with it. Like, pitching Dragoons off of this card is insane. She is also a level 3, so she can be searched by Pike. And she's a tuner, so she can be specialed off Hulk. Just very, very good card and mandatory in um, combo decks that are water-based. Because it just steals a hand trap. And, like, this is another reason. So, like, um, you can put up as many interactions as a standard combo deck. And then you can also steal cards from their hands like I said with uh in the intro but besides just like making your opponent start with a four card hand and then playing through as many negates as dragon link you can like take hand traps out of their hand which is insane um there's a lot of expl explanation for minstrel who's pretty self-explanatory but it, it's just a, 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 like a boon to mermail is what I wanted to say uh, and then three shathana this is like my favorite water extender uh I was playing a list with zero shathana for like the longest time but after playing big fish which you can um find that video also on my channel if you're interested in big fish uh i i just love this card i think it's one of the best water extenders it can help you make bahamut shark into toad much easier and yeah honestly at, at worst it's a water monster so it's just a free water extender and can start your rank four plays in the deck and help you make dweller too because dweller is honestly one of the best cards in the format and yeah then for some bricks we got launcher very important for Halky fibrax it just lets you synchro summon at the end of your combo one Lapis Dragon, um, sometimes this is your way to see a tuner, so you can make Halkit Fibrax, so yeah, just one Lapis Dragon, and then Mullen Glacia, just the best, well, not the best card in the deck, but he's what makes the end board for this combo seem so good, is because you summon him, and you take two options out of your opponent's hand, and then they still have to deal with your monstrous board, so Mullen Glacia, just super powerful card. And it also is the card that's going to end up making you think the most because you have to, while you're comboing, you have to be like, okay, I have to search Mullen Glacia before I end up with more than five waters in Grave. And it can, it can get a little tough, but um, there are certain combos you can follow where it's fine. On to spells, three more Moray of Greed. Um, Moray is one of the best consistency spells for water decks because, I mean, it only works for water decks and there's a reason. It's such a powerful card. You essentially reshuffle your entire hand, it feels like. You put bricks back like you're... Lapis Dragon and your Fishborg Launcher, and then you can draw three additional cards. Um, yeah, if you didn't open combo, you can try to see combo with this. It's just very, very powerful water consistency spell. Uh, and then two Deep Sea Aria. You can play three of this. It just feels a little bricky sometimes because if you don't end up seeing um, water monsters in Grave, then it can just be a brick in your hand. But yeah, it, it searches Dragoon, so like that's insane. You banish a water monster to search Dragoon. Uh, it can, like, fix your account for Mullen Glacia, but honestly, more often than not, it actually ruins my Mullen Glacia account, so you have to be very careful with using Aria. But yeah, Search Dragoons is very, very powerful. Um, then we have one Mizuchi. This is, like, honestly, the another reason why this deck is so good is, like, you can play Dragon Link uh, and make your board, and then it just loses to Super Poly, right? Or it loses to Dark Ruler no more. This is a spell card that negates those cards, so... Like, Dark Ruler, you can't respond to monster effects, but Mizuchi's just going to negate it anyways. This 
uh, negates that resolution so it can even negate super polymerization. And it is so bonkers that Mermo have an in-access engine card to negate those cards. So it sets up a crazy established board, lets your opponent play with four cards, and then you get to play Mizuchi, which is beyond insane. Um, next up, two tactics. They're in different sleeves because it's actually in a different deck right now. But yeah, I do play two tactics in this deck. It's pretty hard combo. So if you get uh, hand trapped early, you can end up drawing two cards and then, um, you know, seeing your combo again. However, if you like just have the stones and you get hand trapped and it doesn't matter, you can end up just taking a card out of their hand and then they end up having to play their turn with three cards. It's really funny. Um, but tactics, just like a generally like good card for um, combo decks in general. So Definitely, if you have Tactics, you can play Tactics. Otherwise, you can just play two additional Water Extenders. You don't have to play Tactics. It's not, like, that amazing in this deck um, that it's a must-have, I would say. But, yeah, you can just play Water Extenders over it. Then on to a bunch of one-ofs. We have one, R or one Up Star Goblin, uh, one one-for-one for, one for your uh, Neptibus, one Called by the Grave because Hand Traps are bad, uh, one Monster Reborn, just amazing Extender, and one Pot of Avarice. Because, honestly, when you finish your combo... Um, if somehow they break a lot of it, it's very hard to have any follow-up in this deck besides maybe one play. Um, so Avarice is just like a nice way to follow up and just a very good card, but only one because obviously super brick. We don't want to see it opening hand, but if we have to, we have to. Uh, and then one Abyss Scorn. So some lists only play one target for Megalo. I choose to play this as an additional target in case I draw the Mizuchi. Um, and this is really for TG Wonder Magician in the extra deck because sometimes you're playing against a deck where the pop doesn't matter, like they're not running a field spell, and then you can pop this as an additional interrupt to send one of their monsters um, to the graveyard, and that's just great. It's another interrupt, so pretty good card. May look a little strange for, like, conventional Mermel players or old Mermel players going back into the game because this card was never good, but it actually finds its place as a pretty good card for Mermels. So that is the main deck. Uh, should be 40 cards. On to the extra deck. Uh, the extra deck's actually 14 cards because I realized I sold my Crocosaurus. So there should be a Crocosaurus in here. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, for Lynx, one Abyssalatia. This is part of your end board, and she's so, so good because she can be an interact on your opponent's turn to, like, pop a monster or get a search with Dragoons or just pitch any water, any water monster in your hand to get an effect. And then she also... Uh, can search the Abyss Dine, which is very, very important. And when I finish the extra deck, I'll explain why that's important. And then she has a really, really cool effect where if she's destroyed, you can send a water monster from your deck to the graveyard as cost, so you can get effects off what you send to special summon a water monster. So she floats too, so it's even harder for them to break your board. And Abyss Alatia, honestly, just such a cool card for the Mermel strategy. Then Halky Fibrax. Uh, you love them, you hate them, but it's not like old Halky Fibrax that I find to be a super annoying card. I feel like this deck actually uses Halky Fibrax as he was made or intended to use without breaking the game. First of all, he's a water monster, which is very important for um, your Fishborg launcher. But also you use both of his effects, so you actually use his um, banished effect, especially a Synchro Tuner monster from your extra deck. And I like when decks utilize both of Halky Fibrax's effect. It's not like old Halky Fibrax where you just go make him and Link Cross, or nowadays you, like, special 001, make Aurora Dawn. None of that nonsense, just Halkid Fibrax as he's made to be used, and he's just a great extender. Uh, Coral Anemone is a very powerful combo piece for this deck, um, so you have to play one at the very least, and she also becomes a Link 2 for Borload Savage. Uh, one Ahashima, so there's instances where you can use this card to make, like, Bahamut Shark with Dragoons, and uh, if you have, like, a Dragoon in hand, and... Uh, like a level four engrave, you can end up making um, Bahamut Shark, and that's for your like weirder combos. There's only a couple combos where this guy comes up. You can honestly take him out for anything you would rather play in the extra deck. And then one off Belusa, just in case she comes up. If I'm not going to fish for the launcher stuff, and I'm not going to lock myself into water, she's just a very good way to end your board. Uh, next up, we have the Bahamut Shark and the Totally Awesome. Very, very standard. If you can make this before 5, you do, so you have an option to Biru. Uh, totally Awesome can add back Dragoons, which is crazy, and he's just an Omni Negate, so very, very good. Then we have one Dweller, because this deck can make it, and you're going to make it with his additional effect to make everything gain 500, which is very good. Uh, Dweller can beat decks on his own. Best rank for the format by far. Just If you can play it, you should. And then one Gaios, nice and ultimate rare, but non-first, so uh, not a great card at all. But 
this card itself is very good. If you end up with a board because like Gun can special Teus and you end with Megalo, you can actually make this against some decks and it can be relevant. He won't come up all the time, but he is a very good piece of interaction against some decks. And then Synchro is arguably like the most important part. Um, let me just organize this how I would like to show it. Uh, one Dragite, very, very important. He is a spell and trap interact, which is great. So you make him with like Megalo and Fishburg Launcher, and then he's going to negate a spell and trap. Very, very powerful card. And you always have a water and grave. So yeah, you need water uh, synchro monsters. So yeah, it, it, this one comes up a lot. Then we have a white aura whale. This is for going second. We side Dark Ruler no more, and you can just pop your opponent's entire board. He's a very, very cool card. Um, Trishula, you can very easily make this with like uh, Launcher and um, Neptibus and Megalo, and you can actually make your opponent lose another card in hand. Or like, say your uh, Mullen Glacier discarded a card that actually has an effect in Grave, you can banish a card in hand and that card in Grave, and yeah, make them play with even less. So Trish is very good. There should be a Crocosaurus in here. I don't have one. I don't know what happened to it. Um, yeah, and then. Some of the most important pieces for the end goal is this TG Wonder Magician and this Borlo Savage Dragon. So as I'm going to explain these, these are just very good interrupts, the Borlo Savage Dragon. I'll explain what the end board sort of looks like, and this is one of the most important parts of the video, so hope you guys stayed for it. So your end board usually looks like this by the time your combo is over with. You'll have an Abyssalatia. I really hope my camera can see all of this because I'm trying a more zoomed in uh, view for this video, so who knows. Uh, you'll have an Abyssalatia, sometimes you'll have a Toad, sometimes you won't, and you'll have a Dragite. Um, these are two very standard ones, and you'll have the Halk. So Abyssalatia will be like here, and you'll have Halky Fibrax on the board. This looks like a very standard um, thing. Sometimes this Toad is a Mullen Glacia or a Crocosaurus. Just depends on how your hand ended up. So like, on your uh, end phase, not your end phase, during your opponent's main phase, uh, after they get like their first action, um, you, you get to activate Abyssalatia. And what you normally do is you have to activate her as chain link one, that's very important, otherwise the dime will miss timing, so at the resolution of their first effect, uh, Abyssalatia. Um, she also normally has the Mizuchi equipped, but there's no reason to like show that. So you can pitch heavy infantry to pop one card they control, one face-up card, and then she will search your Abyss Dine. And Dine is very, very cool here because she will then special summon. Um, and if you activate this as Chain Link 1, this will not miss timing, which is very good. So you special Dine, very nice. And then Infantry also gets a pop. And then you can, if they play a Field Spell or something, you can banish Halky Fibrax to summon the TG Wonder Magician, pop the Field Spell. If not, you pop your Scorn. But this card actually has to pop, so... If this is your main combo, they're not playing like a Spell and Trap card deck, you probably should get Scorn over Mizuchi, just depends. Uh, and then you can actually Synchro with the um, TG Wonder Magician and the Abyss Dine to make your Borload Savage Dragon, which is very, very good. Because it means after, you know, you get your Interact and your, with your Pop, you get to make Savage and get an additional Omni Negate to go with your Spell and Trap Negate, your Mizuchi Spell Negate, uh, and then you have two Omni Negates, or um, Crocosaurus for another pop, just depends. And that is a lot of interaction for your opponent to deal with when they started with like four cards in hand. It's actually super, super insane and super powerful. So that is the Mermel deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will be sure to answer them. If you have any thoughts or opinions on the deck, I would love to hear them. Um, tell me how your guys' games with Mermel are going, if you've been playing it, or maybe you just want to build it. Um, it is a very cool deck, so that was the deck profile. Hope you enjoyed. This was uh, Top Tier Gaming, and peace.